Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're going to be getting started in just a few minutes. Hi Coco, hi Sunny, how are you today? Anybody doing anything fun today? For those of you who are new around here, we do a live watercolor class every other week and uh, we're gonna paint together today. You can feel free to just watch if you just wanna see the process or if you want to, you can grab your supplies. Today's is gonna to be super adaptable. You could really do this with, I'm gonna be doing at least a base layer of watercolor. I might add in some additional media into it, um, but you could do this with any, any media because the idea here is to just kind of play and explore. Your bacon bread, yum, love bread. You're new here? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, hi, hi. Where's everybody watching from? In addition today, I thought, um, so we're gonna roll for probably three colors for the color scheme of it, but we're probably actually gonna do a little exploration of like color schemes, which will mean that we're gonna have to mix up some colors. So there will be a little element of color mixing. If you're like overwhelmed by color mixing, this might be a good one to follow along with because we'll actually be talking about it. Texas, Indiana, Sweden. Um, so uh, I repost these on uh, YouTube afterwards about, it usually takes me a couple days to get them up, but as long as uh, it, there are no errors in the recording, I do repost them. And then also, so, uh, right now, while we're kind of getting ready, because we're going to get started in a second, if you need to, you can screenshot or screen record this here, but you can also go to my website, it's Rebel Unicorn Crafts, and there's a PDF downloads section where you can download this for free. It's just a, it's just a download, but in case you want to, like, you can either follow along with exactly what I'm doing today, or if you're like, I like the idea, but I want to do my own rolls, um, you can go ahead and go grab that and then play along with us. <laughs> crazy holidays Mary yeah yeah it's been we're, I feel like it's I cannot believe it's almost the end of January or it's like mid-January crazy all right so the whole goal here is uh, I've got a new sketchbook that I'm going to do I've got another pad of paper in case I decide to do a second one but I'll probably just do this in a sketchbook my goal for today is to do kind of a low pressure painting. This is a good type of exercise for when you want to play with paint, but you're like, oh my gosh, there are too many choices. I don't know what I want to paint. I've got too many projects and I'm overwhelmed. And so this is going to take out a lot of the choice. We will still have to make some you know, decisions during this, but this will take out a ton of the choices and it'll allow us to kind of play and be a little bit free, or at least that's my intention for today. So. We're going to start by rolling. Um, oh yeah, is can can anybody else not hear me? Can you hear, can you hear me? See somebody say they can't hear. Before I start <laughs> going way too much into this, I want to make sure that you guys can actually hear me. <laughs> Or actually, no, I, some of you must be able to because I asked some questions and you answered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so let's actually start by rolling. I'm going to get a little test piece of paper here to write down what I'm rolling for. So I'm going to start by rolling for our color scheme um, in general. And we're going to then mix up our colors because we might get some colors that you're like, mm, I don't know if those are going to work together, but we're going to play around with some color schemes and things like that with that to try to make them work together. So. For this one, I want to do three colors. Uh, you could do two, you could do four, you could do however many you want. Um, in order to have the chance of actually getting yellow, we're going to start with rolling just one dice. So our first color is going to be blue. I love blue. 
I didn't used to really like blue, and now it is like by far one of my favorite colors. I think paint has a lot to do with that because the blue paint colors, I love them. All right, second one, 10 is silver. Ooh, this could be pretty. We could do like, yeah, silvery. And our third one is gonna be purple. Okay. Right off the bat, those three colors are gonna look great together. But I wanna do a little exploration because part of my idea for today was to be able to talk a little bit about color and things, and I think it will be a helpful part of the exercise. So I was kind of thinking there might be like, you know, three different colors that you're like, mm, I don't know, doesn't really work for me. But <laughs> one of the things I like to do is I do have, since today's theme is like, I don't wanna make a ton of decisions, um, one of the things that I do when I am feeling like I don't like making decisions is I reference one of these books. I've got this one that's Palette Perfect and the Color Scheme Bible, and I love both of these because they're great for, like, if you have one, so if you're like, I know I want to use this very specific blue color. Like, actually, let's see. Let's, let's use this one. I love this Prussian blue. It is kind of a deep blue, really bold blue color. So let's look through these books to try to find um, a color scheme that's going to have a purple in it that will kind of complement this because maybe the purple is going to be more lavender or maybe it'll be a little bit different. You're heading to the pottery studio? Oh, fun! Yeah, this is just, it's such a fun book. So we're gonna look through, we'll look through both of them just to see. So that Prussian blue kind of reminds me a little bit of this, but there's not a purple on this one. So we're gonna keep exploring to see if we can find one that has a purpley color and more of a Prussian color. We might have to go over towards something like this. Like that's kind of a Prussian blue. And then this is a lavenderish blue. This could work here. Let's see. This could also work. Ooh, these could be really, this I feel like could be really pretty with, um, this could be really pretty with that silver. If we did a really dark blue and then we did kind of a, ooh, we can do more than one blue. We don't have to just do one single blue. This one is so far my favorite. And we can look in the purples as well because we know we need purple. Is there a purple that has a blue in it? Hmm. All right, this is my choice from in here, I think. I'm gonna set this over to the side, but we're gonna look through this book over here just to see if there's a better option. Um, I really love how this, this book is just beautiful. Uh, this is a newer one, so I haven't used this one quite as much, but one of the things they do is they take these really pretty pictures and then they'll kind of show you like, here's what, you know, the percentages of these colors that make up these really pretty pictures. And it kind of helps you understand kind of how the percentages of colors can really affect things. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing. All right, so we need to get into the blues. So here's some blues. I don't see any purples really with that. Oh, that is beautiful. We got some pinks, which we could kind of, we could kind of shift a pinky purple with a blue, but I'm not seeing much blue. So far, the other one is still winning as far as the color scheme for this one. I love that. Not the colors we're looking for, but I love that color scheme. This one does kind of a light, but then we need another one. All right, I think we're probably gonna go with the first book for the color scheme, I think. I do, I just love these. I think it's such a fun little way to kind of showcase these different colors. All right, okay, I'm gonna go with the first one because I liked it. Um, and then let's mix up some colors. So we don't have to do every single color that's in here, but I do think I want to do, I think I'm gonna do this one, this one, and then something that's similar to this purple, and then I'll just use the silver straight from the pan. So we're gonna do a little color mixing because the colors that we have, I'm actually gonna do this with tube paints because I don't often demonstrate tube paints, um, and I think it would be a good kind of time to explore that uh, so that we have a little bit of options. So. 
first up, usually when I use tube paints, I like these little mixing wells. Uh, these ones are called muffin tin ones. So they've got a ton of room in these, so if you want to do huge washes, you can mix up a bunch of color. But then it also has all this nice flat space, which you can do the more concentrated mixing and things like that. And whenever I'm mixing up colors, I always start by just putting a little bit. We don't need a ton. On, I probably actually put a little bit too much, but on my palette, I need to weigh this other page down so it doesn't just keep flopping open. All right, and then I'm going to put a little water in one of these wells and grab a brush. So I already know that this blue is going to be a little more vibrant than I want it to be, but just so we get a baseline, I'm just going to take a wet brush and squiggle it around on there, and then let's mix that in there. So here is the color that we're starting with. So we want I want my color to be a little more muted and a little bit warmer. This is a little bit more cool than what I want. So cool is going to lean more towards the blues and the greens. Um, warmer, it'll lean more towards the purples and the reds. And this color that I started with Uh, is Prussian Prussian blue and palette perfect is the name of the second one the first book is uh, the color scheme Bible all right so in order to mute a color we want the color that's on the opposite side of the color wheel and an orange would be good and a vermilion might actually be a good one for this because vermilion leans a little more to the red so we probably won't have to use quite as much and we might also get it a little bit towards that warmer side and I don't want to grab a bunch. I just want to start with a little bit. I kind of want to sneak up on this color. So I'm just going to put it in the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to mix it in. We can always add more. So see how we did mute it a little bit, but not very much. I'm going to grab a little bit more. If you go a little bit too far, it'll kind of go more towards the gray, which could be pretty, but it's not quite what I'm going for. Getting a little more muted, just a little bit more. Getting closer, and I think this might be close to what I want for my first color. Yeah, kind of a nice grayish blue type color. Um, see how this one, even though this is still a cool color, it is definitely a warmer version of this blue than this one is. So this is going to be my first, well, hmm, actually I think I want this to be even more, um, even more warm, so I am going to grab some quinacridone magenta. This is one of my favorite favorite colors of all time. Is quinacridone magenta in watercolor? Just love it. I think it's so versatile. Uh, it's great for mixing tons of colors, and it's so pretty on its own. Let's grab a little bit of that, and let's mix that in a little bit more. See, we're getting a little bit warmer because we're adding in a warm color. Mm, just a bit more. And if we add a little more water to that and maybe just a little bit more of this, it will be more of that color here. So I'm going to put a little more water in here just to kind of dilute the color. It's not going to be an exact match, but we're going to get kind of close to that color. Also, watercolor lightens as it dries, so you might want to wait for a second to actually see what color this is going to end up being, because it could be pretty different than the color that you're putting down. Uh, the mixing palette, I think I got this one from Michaels ages ago. The brush, the brush is one that I do sell. These are quill brushes, and I love them. Um, I have really started to paint with these because these are my absolute favorite ones, but I will say, so for beginners, because these are pricier um, brushes, I'm sorry, we're going to take a little break, but just I want to let people know. For beginners, I'm trying to find it over here. What I recommend starting with is something like this size 12 
round brush. This is also one I sell, but this one is a way more common brush that you can find um, at most stores is something with bristles like Taclon bristles or synthetic bristles uh, and a size 12. And these don't have quite as much movement. They don't hold as much water. So they're actually a little bit easier for beginners to control. There is still some fluidity to the brush, the bristles. Um, and you can do pretty much everything you, you want to with one single brush. So if you're a beginner beginner, what you want to look for is a size 10 or a size 12 round brush. Um, and you really just start with just one brush. I mean, you can start with more if you want to, but if you're on a budget, one brush is all you need. And then after a while, when you're like, I want more water, I want less control, that's when you're gonna wanna kinda switch over to a quill brush. Plus you'll be ready for kind of a higher price point at that point, cause you're gonna like, you're like, I know, I, I like painting, so I'm gonna keep doing it, you know? Uh, so today what we're doing is an abstract dice roll game and if you want the instructions for this you can follow along with me or if you want to you can go onto my website and I've got a PDF download section and it's just a free download so all right so we've got our first color and see how that one it did change as it dried it's still not exactly it's actually a little closer to that one but that's fine I like this color so I'm gonna stay with this one so I want to make a purpley kind of mauve type color so we're gonna use I'm gonna try to use basically the same colors in different quantities uh, to make this but the three that I have there I think should actually get me a similar color so we're gonna add in a little bit of this blue not very much so again here's our starting point for this color then we're going to add in this quinacridone magenta which is a nice bright pinky type color or magenta type color and we're going to add that in so now we're here let's go a little bit more I want it to be a little brighter you can also play with kind of contrast so you can make some of these colors darker some of these colors lighter because that can really help with an actual um, kind of composition to help things pop. I need a little more of this. I do have another tube of this, thankfully, because this one is pretty much done. <laughs> As you can see, this is my, one of my most used colors. <laughs> I painted, um, I just got done writing a book about watercolor and I used 12 colors in it. And the only one I had to replace because I used so much of it was the quinacridone magenta. The rest of them I was able to paint just tons and tons and watercolor tubes last so long I was able to paint tons and tons the only one I had to replace was the quinacridone magenta so now we're more towards kind of that reddish purpley color but see this one's a lot more muted so I'm going to try to use that same vermilion color to try to kind of mute it but also make it a little bit more red and let's see what that does kind of close maybe a little more blue That's, that's getting there. I'm not going for exact, exact, exact type things, um, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that orange and a little bit more of that blue. That's kind of the color. I think that'll look nice with that color. Ooh yeah, those two colors together are gonna look really nice. Although I think I wanna make this color darker, so I need to up the concentration of this color because this one's a lot lighter than what I kind of initially in intended to do because we're also going to do a silver and I think a silver needs a really dark color to kind of pop off of so we're going to go into the mode where we're going to really darken 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 that color so I'm going to grab a ton of this and just adding more and more this is one of the benefits of tube paint you can absolutely do this with pan paints you just have to be patient and just continue to grab um, color but tube paints you can really kick up the you know vibrancy of a color that you're mixing or the saturation a lot faster because the paints just a lot more available so we did a mixture of the, these three so we're using these same three colors to make two very different colors just kind of checking as we go let's add in some of that orange Ooh, I think I might have added too much we're gonna find out maybe not maybe that'll work oh yeah no I did <laughs> a little too much all right I'm gonna have to get a little more of that Prussian because I did it's just gonna be kind of gray <laughs> 
That is actually my favorite way to make grays is to mix blue and oranges together. And just make sure you mix really well. Yeah, I think that'll be really pretty with, so this is our other color. I think those two colors will look really pretty together, especially with that nice kind of um, silver color. And then, you know, we can always throw in just some of the straight this color to just kind of add a little extra. So we could add in a little bit of the, that kind of brighter blue color in maybe sparing areas. All right, we have our colors mixed. And then what we're going to do is now we got to roll some more to figure out. So for the background, because we're going to be painting, and I think I'll paint across two pages in here. Um, so I'll have to skip my first page and I'll have to go back and, and do my first page again. But we're going to do across these two. Uh, we're going to decide with the next roll, just one dice, if we're going to have a background. So see, four through six is no background, but one through three, we will get a different type of background. All right, so no background, so we're gonna go on white paper. Our first element, first one, is going to be lines. All right, so we can interpret these kind of loosely. We're gonna work in, we're gonna work in layers. So we could do like very, very, very like strict going towards lines, but I think I want to play with something that I've been, I've got a couple little sketches off to the side somewhere where I've been kind of playing with this and I think I want to, I don't know, let's try it. So I'm actually going to grab a different brush. You could absolutely use the same brush if you want, but I want to play a little bit with like almost dry brushing, but not quite dry brushing. And I want my lines to be thicker. So I'm going to grab this angle brush. This is just an older acrylic brush that I had over in my acrylic painting supplies that I'm now using for watercolor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a paper towel because I'm going to load my brush just a little bit with this. And I want there to be, I want it to be kind of saturated in the bristles um, so that there is some in there, but I'm going to wipe it off and then maybe tap once or twice, just a little bit, because for these lines, I want there to be texture. I don't know why, but that's what I want, and we're just doing kind of a fun exercise. We're gonna go with our gut. I'm gonna lightly go across. So we're getting a little bit of texture, and you know what I'm gonna do? Oh, I was actually supposed to roll for more stuff, but whatever. We're just going with this one for the first one. I'm going to put some water in this, and the next time I'm going to dip just a little bit into some water. And then I'm going to do that again. And the idea is that I'm going to be making this color lighter and lighter as I go down. So I guess we're going to pretend like I, I rolled for an effect that would <laughs> create this. I'm not even playing my own game right. Whoops. All right, I'm just gonna do these lines across and I'm gonna kind of play with the pressure that I'm putting down. And I can also play with how much was in my brush. See, that one's more solid. So let's dry it off a little bit and then I can get some of those. Oh, that's kind of fun. Hello, hello, and also thank you to everybody helping each other out in the comments. I really appreciate that. Um, sometimes I get really into what I'm doing, it's hard to watch the comments, but thankfully we have such a nice and helpful community here that we just help each other out, and I love that. Just making these lines all the way across. I think I'm gonna go back in to a little bit darker. Towards the edges. It's kind of like a, a wallpaper. I don't know. <laughs> but it was fun to do. I, I really like the texture that that creates. I just think it's kind of an interesting texture. So we're going to roll again, and I'll, I'll actually try to play my, my own game right. So the idea I actually had that I didn't do was, and I guess you can kind of choose if you want to combine these two. The idea was to pick the element and then pick the effect that you were going to try to create with the element. So these would kind of go together. If you didn't want to, if you're like, don't tell me what to do, you don't have to do that one. Um, so, all right, this one we're gonna roll twi with two, two dice and then we're gonna roll with one over here. 
Six is dots. All right, so we're gonna do dots. I'm gonna write these down as if I'm gonna forget immediately, but just in case. And the effect we're gonna do is with one dice, with lifting, okay, okay. Dots with lifting. So they don't, I don't have to create the dots through lifting. I could create the dots through lifting, but I have to do some sort of lifting with the dots. All right, does anybody have any thoughts on, I have a couple ideas, but I'm curious to know, does anybody have any ideas about the lifting with the dots? Kind of like bubbles. So what I was kind of thinking is I could put down uh, the color and then I could lift from the center so that it would be more concentrated kind of around the edges. Concentric circle dots. Oh. So lifting is where while it's wet, or we can actually do it while it's dry as well, uh, is where we, we pick up some of the pigment. So I'll, I'll be demonstrating it in a second. That's kind of the idea of um, the live is we can explore different effects while also just playing. The edging with darker. Okay, so I like, I really am liking the idea of some of these concentric lines. So, um, yeah, I like that purple lift and then outline it in silver. Let's do that. And in order to do that, I've got my silver over here that I want to use. And I need to pre-wet it so that when I am ready to use it, it will be ready to go. So for lifting, we can, we can use a brush to lift. We can also use a paper towel to lift. You can use a ton of different things to lift. But um, let's do it with a brush for now. So I'm gonna grab, and actually I think the round brushes are better for lifting. So I'm just gonna switch over to using the round brush for a second. And since we're doing dots, I suppose that means that it should be smaller than um, if we were doing something with like a, a circle or a blob, because I think I have those on there. So these should be little ones. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm going into this purple color and we're just gonna make dots and this is not exactly how I was thinking but this is what I started doing so that's what we're currently doing <laughs> just gonna make some dots we're going with our gut today so if you're following along you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing if your gut tells you to do something else do something else all right before those get too starting to dry too much what we're going to do is i'm going to take this paper towel and i'm just going to dry my brush off and this is one of the magic things about round type of brushes is that they can actually kind of be like a little syringe let's see if we can get this close so you can see so if i tap my brush onto one of those little puddles it's going to suck up that extra water and just it just slurps it right up so you can do this, um, you could do this to actually kind of remove some of the color, but you could also do this, a lot of times I'll do this at the bottom of paintings, um, when I do that make it dry thing. I don't usually want to dry when there are, is just a ton of like standing water because it can blow around. So I will often dry my brush and then just kind of let, let it slurp it up. And it does, obviously, once, once it gets to a kind of a point, you do have to re-dry it off. But then we can just kind of slurp it up. You don't have to do this part. You could also take, like, the edge of a paper towel in order to do this, too. And just touch right in the center of these. Either works. Whatever... The best way to do these different things is however works for you. Okay, we've got some dots there. I'm going to make some more dots kind of in a couple other places. And you know, you could also do things like if you've got a bunch of this here, you could try experimenting with like the back end of your brush if you wanted like little tiny dots. 
You can do whatever you want to. We're experimenting today. So just follow what your gut tells you. Just kind of dotting here. And then we're going to lift out the majority of that color. <laughs> and then we're, I think I am going to do a little outline because I like that idea of some of these. This might not end up being the most spectacular thing that we've ever painted, but we're going to just try to have some fun doing it. So other effects that are on this list for possible roam, um, rolling are things like wet on wet versus wet on dry, charging, blooms, lifting. We can also do some masking. But in general, what we're going to be doing is layering things. So after we finish this little layer, we'll actually take a second to dry this um, so that when we do layer the next one on, then it's not going to disturb it so much. And we are getting kind of a nice little ring around some of these ones that are already starting to dry. See how it's kind of ringing around the edges? That's kind of fun. All right, uh, but we're gonna use some of that silver because we said we were going to. And I don't know if I'm gonna outline each one of these but I've got a little bit of this silver in my brush. And, but let's outline some of these. And they're a little wet. Ooh, yeah, that just totally took it over. So maybe I'll try to outline them so that they don't touch so much. I'm just going to outline a couple of these in each one of these little groups. Why not? We said it would be fun, so we're going to do it. Okay, we've got some pops of silver in there. So the next thing I'm going to do before we roll again is I'm going to take a second to actually dry this. Um, I use a little craft heat gun for this. Um, just to kind of speed up the process. You can absolutely set it to the side and start another one and then just keep working and let it dry naturally. But for those of you who are impatient, you want to use something like this or a hair dryer also works. Just make sure you're not going to blow anything around um, you because everything will go flying and you don't want to concentrate in just one area. You want to keep it moving the whole time. But the other part of that is this will be a little bit noisy potentially if the noise canceling doesn't work. So if you need to, you can actually take a second to just turn your volume down for about 20 to 30 seconds. And that's going to happen in three, two, and one. That's kind of dry. Um, <clears throat> so in the comments, uh, new notebook, yeah, this is, well, it's the same one like I always use, but I did just finish another one, so I had to open a new one. Um, and masking, so masking fluid is, yeah, it is a liquid um, latex product that you put on and then it protects the under part. But you can also mask with things like crayon, you can mask with things like tape, um, but it's basically preserving some of the paper underneath it so that the white shows through or potentially the texture shows through and then you can paint on it or around it so that it stays kind of, you know, masked. 
Uh, somebody says the bokeh effect, and I'm wondering, are you on the Patreon? Because um, I do a, I have a Patreon, and we do a live meeting, so we actually get on to like Google Meet, and I do teach a lesson, but it's a little more interactive. And one of the suggestions was for that bokeh effect, and it has been in my brain, so that might be what the lesson for Patreon is this month. I haven't a hundred percent decided, but I have been thinking about it. All right, so we're going to roll again. We definitely need some more contrast. So whatever I do next, I think I will probably use a really concentrated amount of that blue in certain areas because everything is kind of all the same value currently. So I need something a little bit that has a little more oomph to it. So what we've done is we rolled for a color scheme. Um, and then we mixed up some colors. We rolled for a background. There was no background. We started with some lines that we rolled for. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're just playing a fun art game. This is not meant to like, I mean, maybe this will be like one of the coolest things I've ever painted, but it also might not be that spectacular. The idea is to just kind of embrace playing with our watercolor and taking some time for when you like don't have the mental capacity to sit down and like really do something or make a bunch of choices. This is a really great way to kind of take that away. So we're going to roll for, we rolled with two for the last one, so we're going to roll with one, and then we're going to roll for the effect. So we're going to pick an element, and then we're going to figure out what effect we're going to use on that element. So we can play with these different things and just kind of experiment. So our next element will be circles. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're going to do circles, and the effect we're going to use is charging. Ooh, yay. Okay, this is going to be fun. Um, all right, cool. That's actually, I was kind of hoping for that. So circles with charging. Again, I'm going to write that down as if I'm going to immediately forget. <laughs> so I did mention I was going to do, um, our color scheme is purple and blue and silver. I think I'm going to go a little off book because I think I want to charge with this neon pink. So um, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to pre-wet this so that I can, because I, I just think it'll be really fun and I think it'll look neat and I, I can use that really dark blue, but then I can charge it with, where's my brush? Here's my brush. I can charge it with this other color. So charging, what is charging? Um, is essentially either letting two colors kind of touch together when they're wet and then they one charges into the other. You can also just take another color in your brush and kind of drop it in and charge it into a wet color. Um, it's kind of like creating like a little like bloom or something like that, but it's just a slightly different application of the, the technique. So I'm grabbing this darker blue color. My circles will be circle-ish or circle adjacent, but I'll try to make them less like blobs and more circular. And I think I'm going to overlap in some of these areas, but I'm going to not overlap so much in all of them. So we're going to start here and let's just try to make a circle type shape. And I'm going to load this with lots of this color as I do this. Okay, we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to make, oh, I'm going to make another one here just because I want to make sure I use maybe a smaller one. And I'm going to try to drop in lots here so that I have a little extra working time. And then maybe one that's kind of coming off the page over here. And then, oh, okay, I'm going to play with the contrast. So I'm going to grab some water in my brush so it's going to lighten this. And then let's put this here and they'll kind of bleed together. Maybe even a little more. I will get to the charging in a second. <laughs> kind of over here. Let's put another one here. Another circular shape. Then I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna grab that really bright pink color. And I'm gonna drop this in just in a couple spots. 
Doing this while everything is wet is the key to let it kind of swirl around. And since I'm adding it here, it's it, it, I'm not technically cheating with the pink because uh, it's going to kind of combine in some ways with that blue color to make kind of a purple. Oh, that's kind of fun. That is kind of fun. Which is the whole point of this, is just to do things that are kind of fun, you know? So my, my sketchbook is cotton paper, yes. And that is one of the kind of the big differences between, I'm a big proponent for use the paper that you're going to use. And in a lot of cases, that means using a cheaper non-cotton paper because sometimes, you know, when you get first get started, you're like, one, I don't have the budget for this. And two, using expensive paper is daunting or it can be really daunting. So if you're like, I know if I buy that paper, it's just going to sit on my shelf, then what's the point? Just buy, I like, I like Canson for beginners um, because it's like, if you cut it up into multiple pieces, it's actually pretty cheap per use. Whereas something like arches, I mean, if you've got the budget, paint with arches absolutely but um yeah it just uh, it, it can be a deterrent for actually creating <laughs> but um back to what i was saying non-cotton paper does dry a lot faster so that is one of the big differences i'm going to take a second to actually lift out i see i've got these puddles and again i'm going to dry this in a second and these could go kind of everywhere. I'm not going to remove all of it, but I'm going to I'm going to pick up some of the excess just so that I'm not sitting here forever trying to dry this. If I let those really sit, we could get some really interesting back runs and blooms happening, but I'm going to take them out for now. Yeah, they do look like cool planets, and then these are their little asteroid fields, or maybe they're their moons, and there's the rings of the moons. Ooh, maybe we'll kind of try to make this into more of a planet vibe. Maybe, maybe we'll lean into that. I don't know. That will depend on what the <laughs> what the next element is. Again, I'm gonna use a heat gun in order to actually dry this layer. If you're sensitive to noises, now is a good time to turn your volume down for about 30 seconds ish. Once this removes the sound will be off. So that'll happen in three, two, and one. fun thing before we roll for our next thing I want to discuss um, and we can take a second to do this together you might feel a little silly but I'll do it with you uh, is to talk about contrast and value so before we added in in these little circles you might have been like yeah it looks kind of neat but it's like very flat and that's because everything was a similar value um, it like it doesn't stand out against each other so in order to have contrast you want things at very different levels of value the white paper is one value this is one value this is like a half a value more but these have a lot more to them and one of the ways you can kind of test your pieces to see how much contrast and how many differences in value you have is to look at your piece of paper and squint at it 
and or if you have glasses you could take your glasses off kind of a thing but what you want to do is squint and you'll notice you'll be able to notice those contrasts of value so much more notice that when you squint it's like yeah you can kind of see the dots and you can you can't even really totally see a lot of these lines from the background they are an interesting detail to like when you get up close but as far as the entire composition they don't really add a ton of that oomph and that contrast between things so once we added these, we got a bunch more contrast. So even though it's like still kind of a weird little thing, it immediately was like a little more compelling just because we got some more of that contrast. So the eye is kind of like, oh, here's that. And then it can like kind of lazily wander over the other parts. Oh, also so that I don't forget, um, we are thinking about adding a Patreon to the or a Discord to the Patreon. I'm not entirely, like I'm like 90% sure I'm gonna do it, but I've got some, uh, I've got a form. If anybody is thinking about becoming a patron or is a patron or you just like giving your input on things, um, on my Instagram story, I have a link to a form. We're trying to make sure if we do it, we do it in a way that, you know, most people are happy with. So I just, it's a little form there. You can go over if you want to give us a little input. That would be super helpful. All right, we're gonna roll for our next effect because this one I feel like we could end here, but I, I think I wanna add a little more. So we're gonna add a little more. The other beautiful thing about an exercise like this, somebody mentioned planets. This is meant to kickstart creativity and help you kind of get out of a little bit of a funk. So if at any point you're like, I want this to be planets, you don't have to keep rolling. You can just do whatever you want on it. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna do that. We rolled with, I think, did we roll with one or two dice for this last one? We got circles, which would have been five, but that could have been either. Should I roll with one or two dice for this one? I should roll with two or one. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna roll a two. All right, um, while I'm doing this, so yeah, I use press on nails and I can get about two weeks out of them. These are almost done. I think I'm gonna do a video showing you how I remove them and put them on because people were curious because I have tried gel nail, I've tried acrylic nails, I've tried nail polish and every other one pops off and chips and everything. Um, the ones that I like are from this company called Glamourmade. I did link one set on Amazon, but they have a limited number of sets on Amazon. Uh, we already did dots. I'm going to re-roll. Um, <laughs> six. I'm going to re-roll. I don't want dots. If you go to their actual website, they have a lot of really cool styles. Uh, ten. All right, so wavy lines. Ooh, yay. Should we do wavy lines that I get to choose what I do with them, or should we do wavy lines where we let the dice choose the effect we're going to use. Dice. All right. Dice it is. Wavy lines with lifting. Can I re-roll? I don't want to do lifting again <laughs> on the on the wavy lines. <laughs> or do we have do we have to do what the dice say? Reroll. Okay, good. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look at anymore. There were three people who said reroll. Wet on dry. Okay, that's fine. A, l a little boring, but that's okay. We can kind of. Ooh, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna cheat with the wet on dry, because I'm gonna try. We're gonna load our brush with two different colors. Okay. So, what we're gonna do. So the wavy lines can be anything that's just kind of smooth. So I'm just going to kind of go across this page with this. But what I'm going to do in order to get a little variation is I am going to fill my brush with this and I'm going to use this uh, angle brush, but then I'm going to dip one edge of it in straight into that Prussian blue. So as I do the wavy line, there will be a little variation. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this and kind of try to figure out where there are kind of like blank spots or where I want to kind of draw the attention of the eye. Like I feel like maybe the line needs to start kind of here 
and maybe like loop here before coming off. I don't know. We'll we'll see how it how this works. Okay, so we're gonna be wavy. Ooh. Okay, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. I like it. Do I, should I do another one, or should we just do the one wavy line? This is this is one of those ones where I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, hmm, maybe I could stop here, or maybe not. Also, I only got a little bit. There is a little variation, but I only got a little bit of that variation. You can see just a tiny bit on the edge. Just one. Stop. Okay, we're gonna stop on this one, but let's do let's do another painting. Are we, are we ready? Do you guys want to do a second one of these exercises to see what it comes up with? Oh, maybe add a little silver. Hmm. Hmm. We can set it to the side and we can always decide later, too. Okay, let's do another one. Um, yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm, this is one of those ones where, uh, you know that one of the most valuable skills you can get in art is like when to walk away um and in an exercise like this like you can keep doing this until it's like so chaotic that you're like whatever there's no point to this because it's just meant to be fun um but if you can listen to your gut and learn to listen to your gut on when to walk away it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always finished but right now i'm kind of thinking like mm, i like it I don't know if adding any more could be improved, so this is a good time for me to just step away from it, and then I can reopen it later, and if I'm like, okay, I still do want to add some silver, then then you know. You should add some more silver, or you should add a little more to one area or something. I'm going to dry this because I'm going to do it in my notebook again, so I need to flip the page. Um, again, if you're sensitive to noises or you've got like a sleeping baby next to you, now is a good time to reduce the volume until this disappears. It'll be about 30 seconds, and that'll happen in three two, and one. All right. Oh, somebody said I'd like lime green in there. Totally agree. A really bright lime or a yellow or even like a coral type color I think would look great in this. Um, and so this is another time where you can be like, I'm going to add some more colors. But we're going to be doing a second one. So let's figure out what the color palette for this one is going to be. First off, we've got orange. I do like when they include an orange because sometimes that can be like the perfect poppy color like or like a pop of color. Our second one is red. Okay. And our third color is going to be blue. Okay. So this is where I was kind of hoping these books might help us because red, orange, and blue, they... um. These three colors necess aren't necessarily like things that aren't going to look good together, but like if you just think of like a straight red, a straight blue, a straight orange or whatever, you might be like, ooh, I don't know, that's just a lot going on. And so that's where we're going to kind of explore these to see maybe what kind of take on a red, orange, and a blue we could use to help us kind of make the most of these three colors together. All right, so let's check. We can even check in kind of these more um, teal or uh, coral type colors. Wow, my brain just restarted. All right, let's look in the reds. I'm gonna try to stay away. I might be willing to consider more of a coral type color, but I'm gonna try to stay away from pink because pink was a whole separate color. So this has got some red, no orange, no blue. Oh, look at that. Red, orange, and blue. It's kind of interesting. So they use a, um, 
a lighter blue as kind of their contrast. Not loving this one as much. This one, this is another one where if you want to squint your eyes at, like, the only ones that I can really see when I squint my eyes at are these two that kind of pop out so there's not a ton of contrast versus like over here, you can really see the bigger ones. I guess it's kind of the same thing, but these feel very similar to me and I think I'd like a little more, a little more contrast. So the book is called The Color Scheme Bible and the funny thing is, so I bought this years ago um, and this is, I've got a ton of different watercolor books. They are helpful and things, but this is the book that I use the most out of anything. Still looking for red, orange, and blue together for an idea. Okay. Oh, here's Moogie's nose. <laughs> I was probably reusing a scrap of something in order to help mark something for some project I was working on. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, let's go into the blues, see if there's anything with... So this, I'm kind of actually thinking uh, something like this for the red is like, not quite this, but more of like a terracotta red, I think could be really pretty than with a super vibrant orange and some sort of a blue is kind of the image I have in my mind. Um, you can obviously choose to change. And so I'm kind of trying to find a color scheme that's gonna fit what I have in my mind, but maybe. See, like I'm kind of thinking something like this, but swap that for like a super bright orange. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna, this is kind of what I'm thinking. I'm going to check that other book because I feel like there's some really good um, orange and blue color palettes in here. This is So this is the other one. This is a newer one. I haven't used this one quite as much, but I also have only owned it for like three, four months. Um, so it hasn't had as, as many chances to be used. I think those orange and blue ones are back here. Gosh, yeah, these colors, I just I love these colors, like this whole spread. Absolutely beautiful. That kind of has a red. We could do an orangey and a blue. I also, I do really like where they show the percentages, because, like, you don't necessarily always want to use colors, the same amount of each of the colors. Sometimes you just want, like, a little taste of one color. We're gonna have to go a little off book on this one, I think, but. Okay, I think I've got an, I think I've got an idea. I am gonna go a little off book um, on this, but I love, that's, that's really pretty too. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna get distracted by, by these different colors. So let's try to make our color palette into something that we like. Um, I'm going to, you can always leave these colors in your palette. Uh, let's find a, we're going to make our own terracotta type red. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to do this by using a mixture of burnt sienna, that vermilion, and uh, a little quinacridone magenta. If you've got a really pretty terracotta red, you could just do that. I'm going to lean a little more towards the red side of the terracotta though. Okay. And let's mix these in. So, oop, oh, I got both. Starting with both the magenta <laughs> and I accidentally dipped into both. Coral orange and navy, yes. Yeah, that's just, I kind of keep thinking that. We might lean, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna, I'm gonna just try something. There are, there are so many ideas that I wanna try that I feel like I'm gonna accidentally combine a bunch of them and we'll see if they work together. So if you've got a better idea for this, I highly recommend using it because I am flying by the seat of my pants. Okay, let's put a little of this vermilion in there. 
That is a pretty color. I think I need a little more kind of red to it though. So let's add in a bit more of this quinacridone magenta. So I'm going to make this one more into the, I'm going to try to lean this one more towards the red side. So I'm going to add in a bit more of that pink, but I'm kind of trying to keep it more like reddish terracotta. Like I think this could be a pretty, I think this is the red color I'm going to go for. It's kind of a, a terracotta adjacent, but it is more red. And then for the orange, I kind of want to use, we'll have to see how this looks next to it. I have a, one of my handmaids is called carrot juice and I really like it and it's a really bright orange. We'll see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work with the color. Um, but let's let's check and see. Hold on, I need I don't have enough <laughs> paper to really show that. We could go with a really bright orange or I don't know, maybe that maybe a coral color would be better. What do you guys think? Should we go neon orange cuz we're going to do kind of a navy blue, I think. Should we go neon orange or should we go coral? We like the neon. Then maybe I should lean this one a little more towards the red. All right, we like we like the neon. All right, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna add a little more of that magenta into this color, though. I think just to just to kind of bump it just a little more towards this side. There we go. I think that'll be fun. Something about this piece of paper is just absorbing. I think this is that Fabriano. I have very mixed feelings on the Fabriano paper. Has anybody tried it? What do you What do you think about the Fabriano one? And then we're gonna adjust this one. So we're gonna have this and this, and then we need like a, a nice blue color. So I think I'm gonna add more water just because I need more here. Um, and then I'm going to do that Prussian blue and I'm just going to leave the remnants of whatever's here because we had that nice like muted and it'll still be a little muted because I'm adding in more to it, but it won't be like, it'll be a little bit more of a, a brighter, more vibrant blue color. Maybe. Or should it be more of a tealish blue? Like just leaning a little bit towards the green side. I feel like that might actually work good because that will kind of complement the red in this. What do we think? A tealish? Okay, I, I think you're right. I'm actually gonna use some of this. This is one of my favorite colors. Ooh, actually that would be really pretty with that. But I do think it needs a little more oomph to it, so like a little darker. So let's let's mix this teal in. See if that's gonna get us actually towards teal. We might be a little bit too far towards the blue side. We might actually have to put some green in here. Or some yellow. I mean that is a pretty color. But I'm gonna add in a little yellow. Ooh, let's add in some of this green gold. I'm just just going going wild today. <laughs> and now I'm kind of feeling that we sh we should go terracotta instead of red red. Okay, I think this might be a pretty color. Let's let's find out. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I like these three together actually. Look at that. Kind of a teal blue with a 
terracotta-ish red, more red, and then a bright orange. We'll see what how it works. It, it might not, it might not be, it might not be our favorite thing, but again, we're just playing. The idea is to experiment. The idea is to kind of let the choices go. So we're gonna choose our background. Are we gonna have a background or not? We're gonna have no background, <laughs> okay? Our first element is going to be swirls, okay? And the effect is going to be blooms. Okay, all right, okay. So blooms are where, when the paper is still a little bit wet, you just put some water in your brush and then you drop it in. It can make these really interesting patterns in it. So that'll be kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna take, I think I'm gonna get the best swirling effect or the best bloom effects from that teal-ish color I just created. So I'm just gonna load my brush with just a ton of it. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna start to swirl. I'm gonna load my brush back up. I think I'm gonna go across the whole thing. Like this is, this page is hypnotizing you. <laughs> All right, so we got a swirl. I'm gonna wash my brush. Oh, my water is getting dirty, dirty. So I'm just gonna put some cleanish water there. And then I'm going to take that water in my brush and we're gonna add in these blooms. So we're just gonna drop water in all along this. Certain areas are going to be drier and this is going to create a really interesting texture ideally. This might be a little bit too dry. Yep, this is a little too dry so let's actually go over this again so that we have a chance of actually getting those blooms. And you can play around with how long you wait for it to dry before adding these drops in because you'll get different textures depending on that. But that's what a bloom is. And um, this is one of those things where it's like, it's something that you might want to avoid doing if you're trying to work on something that's like very kind of polished and finished, but sometimes it creates kind of a unique charm that other mediums cannot replicate. And so in doing that, you kind of create something unique. Um, I like to use blooms and things like the foreground to kind of mimic the texture of like grass and things like that, or bushes. We're gonna dry this before we do our next element. Um, again, if you're sensitive to noises or need to, you just go ahead and take that volume down for about 30 seconds or so in three, two, and one. So I'm just going to pick up this little dot of water. <laughs> oh, we could spin it around. If you get, ooh, you're getting very creative. 
Very creative. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love the bloom effect. It's one of my favorite effects, for sure. Alright, so let's figure out what the next thing is going to be. So we're going to have um, we did swirls. I'm just going to do two dice. I don't know. Okay. Six. We're going to do dots. Okay. We're going to do dots. And you know what? I wonder, I think I might use a different medium for the dots. How do we feel about that? I kind of, I've got some Posca pins looking at me right now, and I feel like they could make some really good dots. And the effect we're going to use is wet on wet. Oh, well, then I can't use the Posca pens. Although I guess if I'm going to use the Posca pens, we wouldn't roll for the effect. What do you guys want to do? Do you want me to do dots with wet on wet, or do you want me to do Posca pens with no effect? So the question is, can you put... Um, do I have an example of this somewhere? Can you put paint on top of acrylic? The answer is like yes and no. So first is acrylic paint is kind of like a plastic polymer essentially, so you can't really paint on it. Watercolor needs something porous to sink into and it's not usually porous. However, some of them are a little bit, have a little chalkier texture, so you can kind of paint on them. Um, and then it depends on how much paper you leave. So like if I were to do the Posca pens and I dotted, I was going to dot in between here. Uh, if I paint it on top of it, it's just not going to really adhere to where the paint is so much. It might adhere a little bit, but not. But the paper underneath it is fine, as long as it's dry. You just don't want to paint your nice watercolor brushes over acrylic paint or it can kind of ruin them um, and once until it's dried. All right, people want Posca. The people want the Posca. Let's go with orange. I'm going to go with the orange. Maybe we can come back and dot around or circle around it with that kind of highlighter type effect. So we're just going to dot, and I'm just going to go... Oh. oh, oh no, I got too much. I feel like these need to be bigger anyways. Doing dots. this out of the way a bit because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to get that all over everything. So we will have to be, I will have to be a little careful uh, as I add more stuff on here and if this doesn't dry because I don't love trying to dry acrylic paint with any dryers because it kind of gives off a, a smell which I feel like anything that gives off a smell like that it's kind of telling you like hey maybe you shouldn't dry me you know so we'll have to be a little careful we might even we might even just have to use other types of things but we'll figure it out We'll figure it out together. Oh, I actually kind of really like this. It's like giving kind of seashell or circus tent. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, roll again for another element and then an effect, or maybe not an effect. We'll see what we'll see what it says, and then we'll kind of figure out what we can do. Because I do need to work around that acrylic paint I just put down. We're going to roll with just one, because so I think we roll with 
We got lines. Lines are going to be next. Okay, I can kind of see how I have an idea for the lines. Um, and I think I'm going to use pen. I think I'm going to use a pen for the lines. I kind of just want to connect one side of these and just keep kind of going with this repeating type pattern. Should I use a black pen? I also have a silver pen and I have a gold pen. I don't think the gold will work so well with the colors. I think the silver could look neat or just a black pen. I do have a very sensitive nose. I've been, I have been told that <laughs> before. When does the red come in? Whenever we decide. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, we could do this with the red, but I'm not, I feel like I'm not, I'm not ready for the red yet. So I'm going to be a little careful. This is actually, I'm going to use a cheaper pen. This is more of an expensive one because there's a chance I'm going to actually touch this acrylic and that could affect this nib. So this is like a dollar pen. The other ones are more expensive. So I'm just going to do, I think I want to do like three lines coming out from either of these and I don't really know why, but that's what I want to do. Remember, we're just trusting our gut. This The idea is these are little prompts and just whatever your first instinct is, that's what you should use. Kind of looks like a bike wheel or something almost. Or maybe like a Ferris wheel. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm getting Ferris wheel vibes. Badminton birdies? Oh, totally it does. I love badminton. I actually gave myself tennis elbow one summer from playing badminton so much. <laughs> Getting fang vibes. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a moss. Somebody said it looked like an octopus earlier. Maybe it's a, it's an octopus who has daggers. <laughs> but these are their little safety caps because it doesn't want to hurt anybody right now. So it puts safety caps on its daggers. Exercises like this are kind of fun because yeah, you can make up like so many narratives from such a simple little thing. You could use a red and outline the blooms. Yeah, absolutely. I That's not something I'm super drawn to, but if it's something that you're drawn to, you should absolutely try it. <laughs> There's that piece of string there, so it makes it a little hard to go over the edge. Also, I had somebody say, like, why do you always do it across two pages? Um, they, they don't like the look of that. And yeah, this is just a personal preference. I personally think it looks neat when it stretches across two pages and it gives me a little more. Um, but if you find yourself like it's too complicated because this, when these strings get wet, they can kind of bleed through and affect the other pieces in here. I treat my sketchbooks kind of like a journal of the activities I was doing at the time and the ideas I was playing with, they're, it's okay if they're not perfect in my eyes. Um, and, but if you find that you don't like that, then it probably, you probably want to not go across both pages. Art is all about pre personal preference, what you enjoy, what you enjoy making. Oh, I feel like there, I'm, there's weird spacing. This needs to have a dot here. There we go. I feel better. <laughs> yes, you can absolutely, you could, you could drop in a different color. 
um, for your blooms. The one thing you're going to notice is different colors have different properties, so certain ones might not actually um, create the exact same type things. They might have a more of a they might sit more on the surface, they might do different things, but yeah, you can use a different color to make blooms. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's see what the dice tell us for the next thing. Art really is science, for sure. Like, there are certain parts to it, because you have to understand how all the materials work together. You have to understand what you can layer on top of other things and not. Like, for example, um, I opted to use a cheaper pen to add in those details. This pen is waterproof, so I could paint on top of it. But this one isn't, so whatever I do next, I'm going to have to avoid that pen. And you have to understand the different properties of things and what sticks to what and kind of, yeah, how things work together. So you actually have to understand some different properties or, well, oftentimes stumble upon the different properties. <laughs> it's like active experimentation. All right, so our next element, this, I think this is going to be our last element because we are technically over time, but I am having fun and I, I need to add that red in there somewhere. I don't know where, but um, I'm going to roll with, I don't know, two, I guess. Eleven. Oh, I was dreading that. I don't want to add text. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to re-roll. I feel like this is already too busy and text is going to just be too much. I mean, it could be kind of neat to write different things in there, but I don't know what I'm going to write. And I'm not even sure why I added that in there. Dots. We already did dots. Swirls. We already did swirls. Oh, I guess we could do... Mm. No, because I, I got to be careful. Um, You know what? What should we, uh, I guess we could do the swirl with the red. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I add anything else to this? Should I do a swirl or not? I kind of like it as it is. I know I didn't add the red in, but I kind of backed myself into a corner by using this pin here because anything I paint over that is just going to smudge everything and you won't even be able to see what I just did. <laughs> we need the red. <laughs> Okay, what about this? What if we take a Posca pen and I do like a little like halo cap on each one of these with red? Your brush rolled across the dot smeared. Oh, neat. Neat. I mean, I could go over them, but I'm not going to get them exactly on there. Okay, let's do the... Okay, we're going to do the little capping thing. Alright, so I've got a red Posca. And I'm going to do... I do think this could be look kind of cute. Oh, I got a little fluff on there. Remember, with exercises like this, the whole idea is just to kind of get you rolling. You can at any point, haha, <laughs> dice, dice pun. Uh, at any point, you can just kind of abandon, and once you kind of have an idea going, I mean, once, don't make yourself finish with the dice if you're like, no, I like, I know what I'm doing now. Like, I got an idea. That's the whole thing. It's, it's like a kickstart, you know? So if anybody who joined super late today, um, just so you know, this will be reposted in a day or two to, to um, YouTube, so you can refollow along. But what we're doing is just kind of trying to take a break from making a ton of decisions and just letting kind of the creativity happen uh, by letting the dice make a lot of the choices for us. And we were just playing with different elements and colors and things like that. And at the end, I kind of went a little off book, but that's okay. 
I do have a PDF download of these instructions if you want to do this kind of on your own with your own take. Uh, and that's on my website. It's a free download. You can just grab it under the PDF download section. Also, I am making some decisions about a Discord with Patreon. If you feel like having your voice heard, you can head over to my Instagram. And there is a form um, that I have up on my story that you can give us a little feedback. Now it really does look a lot like a... I am definitely getting, especially down here, the octopus vibes. I don't think I'm going to add the terracotta red. I think I backed myself into a corner by using the... Uh, <laughs> I don't want them to smear. I like them. So I want to keep my lines. Uh, so I don't think I, don't think I want to paint. I'm a little bit too nervous. And I like kind of how we followed the, the line. I think this one to me, I think is done. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep this one as it is. As a little reminder, here was our previous one with a little more planetary. Um, and this one is, I don't know, Ferris wheel octopus or something. <laughs> so I think I'm going to keep it as it is. You can obviously make different choices for yours because, you know, we're just exploring things. I think that's going to conclude today's lesson. I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. Um, this will be a re replay if, as long as there's no sort of like technical issue. And um, the next one will be in two weeks. And I'm not sure what, we, what, what we'll be doing then, but maybe it'll be something that I show you in short form and I just kind of extend it so that you can see it in real time. And then sometimes it's just these fun little exercises that help us kind of get a little more in touch with creativity. I hope everybody has an absolutely fabulous day, and I'm going to sign off now.